Hey folks, please join our great community at rivianstories.com to get all the latest updates, pics, and videos from Rivian owners and fans. We also have t-shirts, hats, and gear guides for your next adventure. Hope to see you there. We recorded last week at the end, and we touched on this new Expel Rivian partnership paint protection film. I don't know that we'll even release it because now we have all these details. (laughs) Before, we didn't know much. We just had speculations on price. So we're getting back together to re-record. What sticks out to you guys? To start with, there's going to be two options for uh, special pricing for PPF through Rivian. One is the kind of front clip protection, and that's going to be with regular gloss PPF. And... That is $1,500, which is a phenomenal deal. Um, Mm -hmm. The second is full vehicle wrap using the Expel Stealth, which is the satin or matte type wrap. And for the R1T, that's going to be $4,500, which is Mm -hmm. also an amazing deal because, yeah, people have been paying six to eight thousand dollars for packages like that that (laughs) yeah that uh, may or may not include ceramic coating and tint and other things but all in all it looks like extremely attractive pricing Mm -hmm. great job on the summary and i kind of scanned through some of that i have a lot of questions like that i'm sure a lot of the community is asking where's the install going to happen is it going to be quality what are the pros and cons of just going directly through a local neighborhood dealer how is the price cheaper all these sort of things uh i'm sure you guys have some other things too but jimmy before we get into that do you have any reactions i know you raise your hand (laughs) because yeah we'll let you get in here and then we'll kind of come around towards some of these other uh, questions so, I mean, yeah, I was I was one of the guys that definitely did not pay forty five hundred dollars for our, our stealth wrap. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, granted, you're not going to release, or you said you're not going to release what we recorded last week. My my big hang up with this with this uh, partnership was going to be that um, obviously before we knew these details, I I hated this for the local shops. But mm-hmm. from what we know now, this is going to be at the local shop level. Um, so that's that checks that box, which is great. I'm assuming Expel is giving some sort of kickback to the local shops because, um, you know, a large portion of the cost is in labor, not really the product, but, but labor. Mm-hmm. So there's got to be some sort of kickback to the local shops slash installers that expels doing. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if it's, I'm curious if it's an all or nothing with any expel shop or if it's more of a, you like an opt in. It'll be interesting to see how many local shops in each area that are current expel uh, installers, how many will jump on this. Um, mm-hmm. so like the warranties of only a five year, 60 thousand mm-hmm. mile warranty versus the warranty that I have on mine is 10 years unlimited miles. Um, in fact, I'm going back, I mean, granted, I don't have 60,000 miles on my truck yet, but I'm going back, um, next week and getting some touch up stuff done. Um, that's another thing mm-hmm. to consider. And I, again, I, I'm still jumping way ahead here, but like, the, does the service have to be, does the. Does any touch-up work have to go through Rivian service? Because, I mean, you're buying it with your Rivian truck, technically. Or is this going to be through the local installer? I don't know. There's there's still, unfortunately, with all the Rivian news we get, it raises 1,700 more questions (laughs) than than it answers. There's There's a lot that we just don't know yet. Yeah. And so far, the communications from Expel. Skylar, jump in here. I know you got a lot. Yeah. So, first and foremost, just to kind of 
back up the clock and what we recorded about last time was just the press release from Rivian and Expel and it specifically mentioned that it was going to be an Expel facility near the factory and now it looks like everything's going to be going through local dealers which you know Jimmy you you and I talked ad nauseum about that when we recorded um, previously that that will not be released now because we have more information um, but I I like the the local model and I feel like you know either expel I I think expel probably got some blowback from their dealer network about offering mm -hmm. this directly and Jimmy with regards to um, how many local shops will pick this up and honor it? I'm I'm with you, man. I think that it will have to be an opt-in thing. And another interesting kind of data point there is that there is a form on that page for submitting your information to get contacted by a local dealer. And that's been up for, what, days, maybe even a week, not quite a week. Mm -hmm. And right. not quite a week. Yeah. And I've seen multiple people posting questions about has anyone filled out this form and actually heard from a local dealer? And all the answers have been no so far. So a lot of people have filled out the form. They they've obviously generated a lot of demand, but people aren't getting contacted about this program. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I think um, just some things just off the top of my head that I'm thinking about, you know, forty five hundred dollars. Yes, you're getting a great deal. Um, I would not expect uh, wrapped edges. I wouldn't expect um, anything over and above each of those packages within that fifteen hundred and forty five hundred dollar price point. Um, expect to pay um 2022 prices for the lack of a better phrase for what what the going rate is for any additional work um if you were to say for instance on the driver's package or the the full front ultimate plus ppf package if you wanted to get the rest of your truck wrapped expect to pay whatever the going rate is you're not going to get the rivian the forty five hundred dollar package in gloss does it does that make sense am i am i making it, sense it it does it does i i think that they're going to do it right and i think that expel is going to take an active hand in getting the templates exactly right to where you can wrap edges and probably the process to help out a lot of these dealers that have not been hands-on with a Rivian and kind of had to learn yeah. the lessons on their own. So I feel like they're going to have the templates and the process kind of down to a T to make it as easy as possible on these dealers. And I, I do think that, you know, one of the ways if I was expelled that I would position it with the dealers is this gives you an opportunity to, you know, provide other, potentially higher margin services as an upside, whether it's tent, whether it's ceramic coatings, whatever the case may be. Um, because I do feel like at these price points, the dealers are not getting their typical labor rates. Oh no. And that's, and that's why I made the point. I feel there's, at least for me, there's no way that, um, expels not, getting or not giving the local dealers a kickback of some sort. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're feeding them a pipeline of actionable demand and business and true. Mm -hmm. But the, I mean, again, I, I just feel like the, the amount of money that people are saving, uh, a lot of that is going to be in, the labor portion of it. I mean, because the, the product is the product isn't cheap, but I, I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> All speculation on how we close the gap of this margin of 2,500 bucks, you know, mm -hmm. roughly maybe 2000. And it could be that there is a mass order from Rivian. And so there's saving some cost on supply on material and a kickback for labor. And maybe then what, what Skylar said, a constant feed of business is definitely, I mean, we all know just from basic economics that if you have a bunch of volume, you can cut down margin and vice versa. Right. So maybe, maybe they just found the secret combo and it's not one thing that makes it all work, but a few things that are going to make it work long-term. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and one, one other important point about what has been released so far is there's no pricing for R1S. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't see that the, the front end gloss protection package, I don't see how that could be any different price wise than it is for the right. R1T. Um, but I am very curious to see what the full stealth wrap on R1S pricing is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And also, if they end up adding additional options to do full gloss PPF on both R1T and mm -hmm. R1S. That's an interesting point, too, that the only full wrap is only in stealth, mm -hmm. um, which certainly is cool. But I know that some colors, I would maybe personally, and a lot of people, and it's all subjective, but uh, I would rather do in gloss versus stealth. So that's very interesting. And while we're on that, you know, <laughs> it's interesting that they, uh, to show the full wrap is in L cap here, <laughs> which, you know, there's been a lot of attention for a stealth wrap because it, it does look super cool. Um, and what we talked a little bit about last time, and I could always release that or kind of like maybe smash these together. It's just that, you know, news travels fast and we recorded on Friday. And then I think that this came out either Saturday or it came out soon after. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, shoot, now we know a bunch of, you know, we're going to look like so outdated. We're going to get 14,000 comments about it's this and that. So we decided just to re-record. But there were some people at the end of the last video when I was talking about how great the white looks and going back to this color battle, there was one person who left in the comments. The question might be, are you going to stealth wrap or not? And maybe that impacts the color you get. And absolutely now more than ever, you know, because 4,500 bucks is way more attractive than 6,500 bucks or 7,000. And so now you start thinking about how that, uh, how that comes into play. Mm -hmm. uh, super interesting. <laughs> and, and just, just to drop a quick prediction, I'm thinking mm -hmm. that the R1S full stealth wrap is going to come in around six grand, sixty five hundred. Wow! Really? I was about. To, I was just about to say, what? What's the bet? What's the wager? And and what are what are what are we guessing? Come on now, let me. No, on there's no way. I uh, I, I think so. I mean, I I don't think it's that much more paint area it is more complex but i mean i don't think it's that much more in material cost so no I, because it's shorter significantly um you don't have this upper strip which is just a time suck i'm acting like i've done this before <laughs> but you know <laughs> small areas you know <laughs> Um, oh, I hope it's not that much more, Skylar. I was I was wondering if it'd be a chance for it to be cheaper because it's so much shorter. No, oh, it's no. Gonna, it'll, no, it'll be more. My guess is uh, two fifty, two fifty to uh, seven hundred and fifty more. So, Dudes, look at the picture. No, one hundred percent. I agree. I agree. But you got to you got to consider the the roof line 
from the A pillar, all of that is going to get wrapped in gloss. Then, uh, nah. Yeah. Do you, mm, so no, that's, that's interesting. You're because if they wrap in if they're wrapping the A pillars, why wouldn't they wrap the roof line and the D pillar? Because you can't see it. <laughs> oh yeah, man, so I that's mean, interesting. I mean, they're because they're still <laughs> on the stealth wrap. They mentioned that they wrap the all the piano black pieces. They wrap in gloss. So any of the piano that's, black is. Any of the piano black is going to get wrapped in in gloss, unless they completely nix wrapping any of the roof line and the D pillar. Which, what's the point of a complete wrap if you don't wrap at least? Yeah, the D pillar. If you come up, you kind of have to go. I mean, there's no good place to stop it. So I agree that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. My two. 250 to 750 more. That's it. Final laser. My yeah. my guess is six grand, fifteen hundred dollars more. Skyler, yeah. don't even give them ideas. <laughs> That's horrible. I'm not going to publish that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we'll see. I mean, that's what that's what people were paying for stealth PPF on on trucks before. Yeah. So I. I yeah. think I think it's a solid guess. We I'm going, we shall see. I'm going uh, f- forty. Mm, yeah, I'm, it's not gonna be. It's gonna be under five thousand. Hmm. <laughs> oh wow! Well, yeah, because we're forty five hundred. So I'm with Jimmy, like two hundred fifty to five hundred more. He said two fifty to seven fifty, maybe. But yeah. I'm, I'm like negligible bump. Uh, All right, so I think, it's mostly, I think it's mostly labor. I mean, if you look at the material there, yeah, I mean, not that and, different. And, but, and think of complexity too. You've got the gear tunnel door on the R O N T that that's about that's that. more cuts. You're going to have less cutting to do on the S simply because the the rear door, the rear passenger doors, is significantly less complex. Um, your longest run or your biggest run, honestly, is going to be, and again, to your point, Kyle, I'm not an expert, but I, I watched, I was there every day watching my installer install and he probably hated me for it. But <laughs> the roof line, because the roof line on the truck is painted, um, that was one ridiculously long piece and an uncomfortably cut piece because you had, you mm-hmm. were really thin at the A pillar where it meets the A pillar and then it mm-hmm. sweeps all the way to the back of the truck, all the way down to the gear tunnel door and then all the way to the tailgate. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. probably the biggest piece, honestly, on the R1S is going to be the hood. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, so it's Dude, definitely going to be a lot less complex. Valid points, Jimmy. So Kyle, my question for you is Mm-hmm. Depending on pricing, I know that you were on the fence with no PPF, you know, maybe some PPF, maybe I, I know you've been tempted by the stealth. What what is Kyle going to do? <laughs> well, I texted my guide yesterday because my uh, registration is ju- I just got my registration in the mail, my plate renewal. <laughs> it's due August 31st. And uh, then I was going to ask him about this too with R1S, and but I haven't heard back from him yet. But to me, Skyler, it depends on the color. I think if I was L cap, if I stick with that, I'm a little bit more tempted to do a full stealth. Although I have said, I think I said last time, which if we don't release it, then we don't hear it. But I've said that one of my favorite parts about the L cap when you get the full sparkle is it kind of sparkles that blue bit of shade. And then when you stealth it, you're kind of getting rid of some of that spec sparkle. And I think that it appears more gray as in this picture. So you kind of take away some of my blue, which I was a fan of. So, but it looks, it's, I think it's my favorite like look though, as far as the, I love how the stealth looks on the L cap. I agree. 
I love it. And if I did white, which going back to here, like this picture just has me really smitten. I mean, this is like my favorite picture of an R1S and it's in white. And I think that if I did white, my gut instinct says to save the money and just do the front clip, which I would at least do the $1,500 uh, one. Um, and then spend my money, spend some extra money on like the ceramic on the whole thing, if that makes sense. That's my gut right now, all subject to change. And it's not that I don't like like the matte on the white. Jimmy's looks great. I wish I could see it in person, I'll say. But I just know that the stealth on El Cap is like, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's kind of mm-hmm. very yeah, noticeable. It, it, it's more noticeable and it stands out more on mm-hmm. the darker colors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yep. Very true. I'm I'm with you though. I I think I'm gonna do the front clip package on my R1S. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so you just told us that you're doing white instead of limestone? <laughs> Is that? Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't it. say that. I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. I mean, I honestly though, I think that the stealth on limestone has the potential to look really good, even though it's a lighter color. Um, because we've, I think that we've seen, yeah, go ahead. We've seen some of that. I, I know I've seen yeah, at I least one to... R1T Pat mm-hmm. over on Rivian stories has limestone with stealth. Nikki and I hung out with Jaron from Rivian's, uh, from over on RS. Uh, over at Manatee Springs, and I posted some pictures. Um, the only thing I, I think the only thing I left out is his is actually wrapped in uh, gloss Expel, and, mm. um, and that's the first Rivian Blue R one T that I've seen wrapped in gloss, and it does look it it does change the color a smidge. It's a, it's a little a little more um, dark almost. Hmm. Uh, than, than if it wasn't wrapped, but it looked. Which color was a little darker? Rivian blue. Rivian blue. Rivian yeah. blue in the gloss. Um, yeah. But so it, I saw that. Like, you sent that to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it looks really good. And yeah, I if, can see that too. If if we want to do another segment today, I think Jimmy should talk about mm-hmm. some of his. Rivian adventures so far and some of his experiences with the community and the public at large. That'd be great. All right, folks, that's it for this one. Again, catch the entire episode on Spotify, Apple podcast, or your favorite podcast app until the next video we'll be hanging out at rivianstories.com. So we hope to see you there.